Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our webinar brought to you tonight by Alvexo, one of the world's leading providers of Forex and CFD trading. And tonight we're going to be learning all about DMI, Directional Movement Index. Now with Alvexo, you can trade stocks, indices, currencies, commodities, and cryptocurrencies. And at Alvexo, we always want to make sure that you trade your way. And to that end, we offer three different trading platforms. You can trade on our web trader, which means you can trade with any internet connected device anywhere at any time. You can also install our mobile app and trade on your mobile device, or you can install the MT4 professional platform and trade on your desktop. And you can go from one platform to the next to the next, depending on what's convenient for you. We want to help you at all times develop your financial knowledge, improve your trading skills, and your investment expertise. And to this end, we offer a massive collection of services and tools. Now, tonight's class is being recorded. And if you wish to see a recorded version of this class, you can do so in about 24 hours by using the same link you used to come to this live class. Now, Alvexo is a regulated provider, and I'm therefore required to give you a risk warning. So let me read that and get it out of the way. CFDs are complex instruments and come with a high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. 77.88% of retail investors accounts lose money when trading CFDs with this provider. You should consider whether you understand how CFDs work and whether you can afford to take the high risk of losing your money. This webinar is considered a marketing communication and does not contain and should not be construed as containing investment advice. Now, in tonight's class, I'm gonna provide you my personal opinions and experiences. And I've been trading since the 1970s and I'm very opinionated but I'm gonna provide you information that's generally available to the public. Believe me, there is no super secret sauce out there. Trading is about risk management, knowledge, experience, education, more risk management, more experience, and more risk management against. Now, I'm not saying don't use things like scanners or robots. I'm not saying don't follow gurus out there. What I'm saying is use your own knowledge, your own education, and make your own trading decisions. Nobody, but nobody is going to lead you to the pot of gold, and no ro robot or scanner is gonna make you rich. You need to apply all this to your trading strategy. Now, when you're trading with Alvexo, you're trading CFDs, contracts for difference. Now, this is a type of financial instrument that allows you to benefit from the fluctuation in price of stocks, commodities, indices, and more without really purchasing them. You do not own the asset. It's a contract between you and Alvexo, or you and whatever broker you're trading with. CFDs are approved and monitored by the regulators. And this contract, it's the same contract every broker offers you. Okay. It does, it's just like creating the commodities market. It's a standardized contract because you can't be trading one type of gold with one broker and one type of gold with another broker. And the price of the contract or the CFD mirrors the market, the market price of that asset. But CFDs have advantages because number one, most trades in our type industry, that's online trading, take place in 24, 48, maybe 72 hours. It's not day trading, but it's short-term trading. And because of this, who wants to go through all the costs and fees of registering an asset and then unregistering an asset? All of that takes money. Like when you buy stock in the stock market, all of it's issued in your name and it's actually available and you can get certificates in your name. 
But all that costs money, which you have to pay. So CFDs have low overhead. They also own, offer you leverage, and you can buy or sell. In other words, you can go long or go short. So there's many advantages to trading CFDs, but you don't need to understand all the fine paperwork. You could read it all if you want, but you just have to understand it's just like trading the asset. You can buy, you can sell. It's the same price. It mirrors the underlying price. It just saves you money. Now, at Alvexa, we want to always make sure all of your questions are always answered. And to that end, there is a question box on your screen. Please only write in questions that are directly related to tonight's webinar. Please don't ask me about your deposit. Please don't ask me about your account manager. Please don't ask me about your tax situation. I have no access to them. I know nothing about them. But if you want answers to those questions, if you just go to www.alvexo.com and just click on the live chat button, and somebody will be glad to answer all of your personal questions or all of your trading questions. Now, we're expecting almost 500 people in class tonight. So there is no way that I can interrupt the class for all the questions to answer them because I'd never get through the class. But we always want to make sure your questions are answered. So feel free to type them in. Number one, when you type in a question, it's along with your email address. If I don't answer it in tonight's class, it will be sent, an email will be sent to you with a detailed answer by tomorrow. The other reason why it's important to write in questions if you have them is sometimes I I don't explain a point correctly or I skip part of the point. Because remember, this is a live class. And if a group of the students don't understand something, I need to go back over to make sure you do. So feel comfortable writing in questions that relate to tonight's class. So let's get on how to trade with directional movement index DMI. Now, DMI is a relatively easy to use indicator, and it's a relatively easy to use indicator to put on your charts. The directional movement index assists in determining if the security is trending and attempts to measure the strength of the trend. So what does it do? It tells you how strong that movement is which is very important when you're looking at trends. <clears throat> if you think about a trend, okay, not a trend line, but a trend, a trend can be a well-developed, beautiful trend with qualified peaks and valleys, a push and ease, push and ease, push and ease. Well, number one, that trend is probably the best trend to trade. But price could move like that. You still have an upward movement, so you have it trending up. Price can also move like that. Now, all of these are upward movements in this case, but they're not qualified trends and they don't have a lot of strength. The other thing is, when price is moving in this direction, this pattern, it can lose its speed. It can still continue up. We're not saying it's going to reverse and continue down, but it's losing its speed. It's an important piece of information for you. So if you think of price, in two aspects. Number one, I describe it as hamster. Remember when we were kids, when I was a kid, it was a very popular thing. I don't even know if they have them around anymore. Everybody would get a hamster as a pet and you get them in this little cage, you go in the pet store and it was like $9.99 for the cage, the feed, the 
gravel on the bottom of the fair, and the bottle with the water and the little wheel, and every kid would get a hamster. Well, that hamster would get on that wheel, and with those little paws, he would puff and puff and puff, and finally he'd get that wheel spinning around. Well, that's like a trend. There's lots of traders. Trends take a lot of effort and energy. But once that hamster gets that wheel spinning around, it seems like he can do this endlessly. It's gained momentum. Now, at some point, he either wants to drink of water or you're getting tired. And you might not have noticed it because he can't stop that wheel. He has no ability to stop. He can only slow down. Now, you might not notice when he starts slowing down. What you might notice is when he's really slowed down. But you can't notice when he's slowed down because the wheel's still turning with its own momentum. But if you could have seen and had an indicator telling you he the, the hamster was slowing down, you would have known that wheel was going to slow down and come to an eventual stop. Or I can explain it to you like a locomotive. You know, a big freight train takes a lot of energy, a lot of coal, no matter what they're using, a lot of steam to get moving along, to get chugging on that railway. Now, that train is chugging along, but he may come into a bend, so he may be slowing down a little, and he's got to slow down way before he gets to that bend because he's got a lot of momentum behind him. But when he's going to come to a stop, he's got to start putting on that, those brakes miles before he comes to that stop. Because he just can't, if he starts to slam on those brakes, the train's going to fall off the, you know, off the tracks and turn over. If in any of these ways, you could have known ahead of time when the conductor was going to start to ease onto the brakes because as a passenger you don't feel it yet you feel it when he's really slowing down but that conductor knows when he's got to slow down but he could be slowing down for other reasons and then re-accelerating so uh, knowing the speed doesn't guarantee it's going to stop it just tells you that something is happening and so reading an indicator that's actually a speed indicator or a not a speed, but a strength, a strength of the trend indicator can give you valuable information. Now, the DMI is a technical indicator which is typically shown below or above the price chart. In our cases, it's always below. It's calculated by comparing the current price with the previous price range. DMI then displays the results as an upward positive indicator, which is a plus DM, or a negative indicator, which is the minus DI. Okay, now how do you get that? The DMI also calculates the strength of the upward or downward movement and displays the result as a trend strength indicator line called ADX or Average directional index. So while the DI or the minus, or the plus or minus DI directional index shows direction, investors use ADX to analyze the strength of the uptrend and the downtrend. And ADX with a reading above 25 shows that a strong trend is in place. Whereas when an ADX falls below 20, it shows that the price is likely moving sideways. Now, we're going to go take a look at this in a chart in a sec. A plus DI is the difference between the highest price of the current day and the highest price of the day before. The minus DI does the same calculation with the current and the previous day's lows. So it's not concerned with the opens to the closes, just the high and just the low. And then you could smooth it out, and most of us do, with a 14-day average. So let's pop up a chart here for you. 
Okay. So this is my standard teaching chart. This is the live Euro US dollar chart. Now, below on the bottom of the chart, I've already placed in DMI. And all you do is go up to your trading indicator, click on directional movement index, and it's going to drop it down already with a 14 day moving smoothing period or moving average. Or you can adjust it by going to your settings button. You can adjust the colors and everything else and the width of the lines. You know, you set up the way you want it to set up. So down below, we have two lines. We have the blue line and the orange line. Only because those are the colors I chose for today. The blue line in today's class is the plus DI. So the blue line is equal to the high, today's high, minus yesterday's high. And that's plotted on the chart. The orange line is the minus DI, which is the today's low minus yesterday's low. And then again, they're averaged out over 14 days, a 14 day period, and they're put on our charts. Simple enough. Now, the only thing we can really tell with this chart is our crossovers. Crossovers tell us the strength or the weakness of the current trend. As you see, I've highlighted it down below. Now we do need to add a third piece of information onto this, and that is our ADX line. I put it in red, but let's put it in a color that's easier for you guys to see. Let's put it in dark green. And I'm gonna make these a little bit thinner now that we've talked about them. So now down below, I've added on the ADX line. The ADX line tells us the strength. And we only want to look at the the 25 range for the ADX. Above 25 tells you the movement. Because it's above 25, it's not it's not like other things that told you overbought or oversold. It's telling you the strength of the current price movement. That current price movement is whatever direction it is moving in. So we can see the ADS line is pretty strong at this point, and so is the downward movement. So we have these three simple lines on our charts. What do they mean to us? How do we use them in our decision-making cap capabilities. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. So how do we use the directional movement index in our trading? When the DI line, the plus DI. I don't know why they named them this way. They're so hard to explain. If they could say the opening DI or the closing DI, but the plus, we always know the plus is the highs. So when the plus DI is higher than the minus DI, then the market is said to be trending upwards and traders can take a long position. Similarly, if the DI, the minus DI line is higher than the plus DI line, then a short trade can be taken and the market is said to be trending downwards. Show. The DMI can be used to confirm trends, the trend of the price signal. The trend is stronger if the spread between the DI, the plus and the minus is larger. Because why would it be larger? 
means the highs are bigger and the lows are smaller. So if the plus DI is far above the minus DI, it indicates a strong trend, upward trend. If the minus DI is far above the plus DI, the price trend is strongly moving downward. So when the ADX line is over 25, that was the last line we added on, then the market is said to be trending and ranging if the ADX line is under 25. So if it's over 25, the market is trending. It's not telling you direction. It's just telling you the market is trending, and the strength of trend. If it's under 25, we're not trending. We just have a congested mess of stuff. Sometimes many traders also consider the market is trending when the ADX is above 20 and non-trending below 20. You can decide if you want to use 20 or 25. I always use 25. An ADX reading above 25 signifies a strong trend, whereas an ADX 25 signif minus 25, there is no strong trend and the price is moving sideways. To trade trends, the ADX reading should always be over 25 or 20 if you choose. And the ADX reading should be lower than the 20 for trading a ranging market. Since I don't ever train trading markets, and I don't ever advise it. When it's under 20, we just make no trades. Traders can also collectively use the plus DI, the minus DI, and the ADX as well as individually for trading purposes. Some traders may only analyze ADX for analyzing the strength of the trend where some traders may analyze only the direction movement lines of the DMI for analyzing the direction of price movement. It depends if you want to know whether a price is trending and how strong that trend is or the speed of that trend. Now, directional movement index produces a lot of false signals. Thus, one should be careful when using this indicator. The readings of plus and minus DI and the crossover depends on historical prices that do not reflect what will happen in the future. Thus, a crossover can occur that could result in a losing trade. The crossovers don't take into account how far the market's going to move. Also, the lines may cross over, which give multiple signals but no trend in the price. This can be avoided by only taking trends in the larger trend direction that is based on the long-term price or only when the ADX is giving you a strong trend. In general, when the ADX, when the DI line is above the DI minus DI line, the market is moving in an uptrend. So this is a very simple indicator. And the bottom line is with any other indicators, the directional movement index should also be used with other technical tools such as volume, price action, candlesticks, and confirm the signals given by that indicator. So in other words, we shouldn't be trading blindly. We have lots of crossovers. that really tell us nothing. But if we take these crossovers, we could see that they actually gave us fairly good marketing signals, but lots of them gave us completely false signals, especially when we're in ranging markets. So if we combine that with the DI line, the ADX line, and made sure it was above 20 or 25, depending on what you're using, to make sure you're trading in a trending market that has speed. So what do you have? You have a movement that is trending that has speed and momentum to carry it forward. We don't know how far, don't care how far. As I explained to you, it's like a locomotive or the hamster in the cage. As long as we can see a well-qualified movement, the only thing we have to do is 
trade small areas in that movement and get out before the momentum or the speed start to wane. I don't care that the hamster's getting tired and the wheels can stop, but he may get a drink of water and keep on going. I want to take my profit. I want a high probability trade. That means when my ADX lines are far apart, my I'm sorry, my DI lines are far apart crossing over, and my ADX line is climbing, tell me I have a positive trend. That's the only thing I want to consider. Now, I want to consider other things. That's why I have my support and resistance levels on here. Because that helps me also make a trading decision. Okay, ADX and DMI are not an individual trading decider. They are a piece of information to help you make a decision or help you build into your strategy. So that's it on AD, uh, DMI and ADX. They're a fairly easy indicator to use, fairly easy to find. The best way to use these is put them on your charts. Watch what happens. When you see a market trending, don't trade with it. Just add it to the bottom of your charts. And when you see a market trending strongly, look at what the ADX has told you. Get used to what the ADX and the DMI tell you and see how often they're right or wrong in your other interpretations. And then you'll start to get your own feel of how you would make your decision or use this to support your decision. Now, me personally, I'm a price action trader. I very rarely use indicators. I use candlesticks. I use support and resistance. I use trend lines. I use chart patterns. If I really see something I want to trade, and I'm not sure I have it right, I may add it one simple indicator to help me interpret or help me see what is going on. ADX and DMI might be that interpreter. I'm, a, I'm really a MACD guy, but ADX and DMI are a nice combination if you want something clean, simple, and neat to just tell you if the, strength is quali the trend is qualified, if the market and the direction has a good direction, and if it has the momentum to carry it. Because what you want to do is you want to find an asset that has already started to trend. You don't want to get at the bottom. You also don't want to get at the top. You want to get in when the market has gathered that momentum, not when the hamster's starting to turn that wheel. You want to get in when that wheel's hit full speed. You just want to get out before he gets tired and starts to slow down. That's it. You want that small segment of high probability in either direction. So once again, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for being part of the Alvexo family, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.